It's block making day. Are you ready? I think so. Keep watching. Hi, it's Fran Morgan with Fabric Cafe, and I am here with Hannah. And if you joined us in the last video, Hannah went through and you cut all of your pieces. We mm -hmm. went through the cutting instructions and got those cut and you organized them. How do yeah. you feel like that went? I think it went really well. Uh, I really liked using the square to do my blocks yeah. and I think it made it go really, really quickly. And so uh, I think I'm ready today to get on to making my blocks. It's very exciting. It's kind of a yeah. neat time to yeah. get going. So the first thing we're going to do to start making your blocks, of course, we're going to refer to our pattern. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and in the very first step on our pattern, we're going to be making the block B assemblies. Mm -hmm. So we can read through this and basically what it's telling us, I'm going to recap that. Of course, you want to very carefully read your pattern mm -hmm. and go through each. We are going to use one fabric number three, four inch, which as you see here, fabric number three, four inch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we are also going to be using to fabric number two, two and a half by with the fabric. Mm -hmm. And you can see that that's what we have here. Alrighty, so the first thing that we want to do, can you guess? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna guess pressing. <laughs> that's exactly right. So you have, you know, you did your other quilt, your practice mm -hmm. quilt, and you did a great job on that. So mm -hmm. I know that you learned a lot doing that. Yeah, so. there are lots, lots of things stuck, but I, I do feel like there are some things when you know when you don't do something enough, you kind of right. lose it when you don't do it immediately again. So there are parts where I'm like, I need a refresher. <laughs> I need to remind myself of all these steps. And before you know it, it's going to be old hat. So yeah, that's what I'm hoping. I'm ready for that day. Yeah. And hey, if you guys didn't see Hannah's first quilt that she made, be sure to check that out on our YouTube as well. I remember that you had to press this because that was that was something that really stuck out to me from the last one. Pressing is extremely important. It's like between every single step, you yes. gotta press again. Yes, and it really, pressing makes a huge difference between a nice crisp finished product and one that doesn't quite go together, gets a little janky sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've got all of my uh, first pieces for my strip assembly pressed. Perfect. Strip assembly A. They look nice and crisp. Great job. So I see here that you have them laid out perfectly, just like the diagram on the mm -hmm. pattern. So we have our number three fabric here, our four inch strip, mm -hmm. then our number two fabrics on each side. Mm -hmm. Now, I like laying them out this way also because it mm -hmm. kind of gives me a visual to see, okay, I'm looking just like the diagram here. Yeah. So that's kind of a neat way that I like to do it, just to make yeah. sure that I'm you know, everything's jiving in my head and I'm going the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> I think that makes sense. I okay. think it's easier that way. I, yeah, I agree. Okay, so then we're going to so start sewing this together. Mm -hmm. The very first thing we want to do is pin one of our strips to the center strip here. Mm -hmm. So I like to sew these one at a time. So what I would do is I would start with these two strips, set mm -hmm. this one aside for now. Mm -hmm. I would pin these together and I would do the second assembly and pin them together the same way. And then you can sew them at the same, at the time. same time. And then come right. back and put on the sec pin the second side to both strip assemblies and then sew both of those. Yes. Efficiency. I see. Okay. <laughs> that makes sense. Right. And also I do like to pin them just one at a time because mm -hmm. often if you have pins on this side and pins on this side, you kind of get stuck mm -hmm. and ouch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's avoid that. So let's start pinning these. Okay. Now I'm putting the big selvage side on that. Perfect. Is that good to match those? That up? is good. And usually what I do is I try to match the edge of the selvage so that I'm sure that I get good fabric together. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? <laughs> oh, okay. So do you match like the strip that ends yes. with Yes. Okay. Yes. Because this one has a little bit more white on the right. end of it. So I match it that way. Yes. <sighs> now, Fran, in the last video series, we talked about pins mm -hmm. versus clips. And I determined that I am ultimately a pin girl. Yeah. I thought it was 
they were easier to work with. Do yes. you have any preference on that? Um, I also prefer pens. I just feel like that the clips don't secure quite as well. In my mm -hmm. opinion, maybe it's the way I handle the fabric or something. I'm not sure. Um, I just do, I prefer the pens as well. Mm -hmm. Now I will, you know, down the road, keep watching uh, for future um, steps on our quilt. And I do like to use the clips on binding. So it's not that I don't mm -hmm. use them, I just use them at different times. Now this looks great. Okay. So this is your first one and we're mm -hmm. gonna be making two of these. So you'll do your mm -hmm. second one exactly the same. Okay. And then once those are pinned, we can sew and do the other side of our assembly. Okay. Now All what right. about strip assembly B? Now strip assembly B is basically gonna be put together the same way. Mm -hmm. We're gonna iron our strips lay them out just like the diagram mm -hmm. shows, get, the, get them pinned. The mm -hmm. only difference really is there's only two strips instead of three, mm -hmm. so you're just passing it through the machine once, and, and a little bit different measurement. So, but mm -hmm. the actual steps are exactly the same. Awesome. I think okay. you got this. I think so too, I'm excited. <laughs> Let's go sew. Okay, so we're about to get started sewing. But before we even begin, I have a question. Okay. So when I'm sewing strip assemblies, I discovered this last time, I tend to go up the end. Like it keeps on going straight, 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 straight until the very end and it goes oh. <laughs> a little bit shorter. Yes, that can be a little tricky sometimes. So a couple of things that I would recommend to kind of help prevent that from happening mm -hmm. is first slow down your machine speed. Okay. That way, if you're moving a little slower, you can keep control of it a little bit better. Okay. And each machine usually does have um, a speed indicator that you mm -hmm. can make it go slower, make it go faster. So okay. let's just do 35 miles an hour, not 55 <laughs> miles an hour. <laughs> Okay, cool. <laughs> Just starting out. <laughs> that sounds the, good. Yeah, the second thing I would recommend is to always work with your needle in the down position. And, and what does that mean? <laughs> so what that means is when your sewing machine stops, like mm -hmm. when you stop sewing and you're repositioning your fabric, for instance, mm -hmm. the needle is going to be in the fabric. It's going to be through the fabric. And basically oh. what that does is it anchors your fabric so it's not shifting from mm -hmm. the seam. If the needle is in the up position, then when the machine stops, mm -hmm. the needle will be out of the fabric and the mm -hmm. fabric could technically shift just a little bit. Okay. So when it's in the down, it anchors it and it makes it a little bit more secure. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Because there, I, there definitely were times where I had to kind of pause and mm -hmm. like sort of not move the fabric, but like realign it for what was right. what was coming. And I didn't even notice that my machine was doing it in the down position. I just didn't know that's <laughs> what that was. <laughs> so basically, it helps to keep your quarter inch spot on mm -hmm. each time. Okay. Okay, now it looks like you did a great job pinning your strips together and they are pretty sides together, which basically means right sides together. So when you hear that term, so we've got them pretty sides together. Yeah. And um, another thing I want to mention just a little bit is when we do our seams here, we want to use our default stitch length, which mm -hmm. is normally a 2.5. Mm -hmm. Now, on your machine, you can increase that stitch length, which means that you'll have a longer stitch, meaning there's more space between the times when the needle goes into the fabric, oh, uh -huh. or a shorter stitch length, which means it'll go into the fabric closer together and more times per inch. Is that Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And are there benefits to having a shorter stitch versus a long stitch? Um, I like to use a long stitch when I'm basting, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't do it when I'm putting my quilt together mm -hmm. because your seams could actually pop open at the ends. Oh. Um, so it's really more secure. Yeah. I usually keep it on the default setting, which mm -hmm. is a 2.5. Okay. Um, you can go a little tighter if you wanted mm -hmm. to and a little shorter stitch, but 
if you have to rip it out for any reason. It could be a little more challenging. <laughs> Let's not make you rip it more challenging. <laughs> so, and on your machine, just mm -hmm. want to mention too, because it is pretty important, and there's some universal symbols on most machines. Your stitch length is a symbol that is a dotted line where it's smaller at the bottom and the lines get bigger on top. So on this machine, you can see it here. Oh. The other setting has like a zigzag that gets smaller and that's the width. So we want that to stay at zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think you're set good. Yeah. We're at a, your machine is set at a 2.5 stitch length, mm -hmm. which is a good standard stitch length. Perfect. And we've got our strips pinned. Are you ready to sew? I think so. Okay. Okay. Now, let me just point out, you see you mm -hmm. have a little extra selvage on the end. That mm -hmm. is perfectly fine. And I would start sewing across that mm -hmm. end. And then if it is a little squirrely at the end or anything like that, mm -hmm. it'll catch it on the selvage and not in the middle of a good seam. Ah, oh, that's good too. It gives you a little bit of, a little bit of leeway. Right. Okay, so I'm gonna do I so I stick it right under the needle. Yep. And put it down. That's it. Now let me just mention too, I see that you've got your purple strip set mm -hmm. up and ready to go. That's awesome. And that purple strip really does help to keep a consistent quarter inch. And I have heard though, Fran, I'm actually gonna turn my speed down just a little bit. Okay. This one has a great speed knob on it. It's right on the front, so I can just <laughs> As I go. Very, very handy. I have heard tell that you don't use purple strips. I don't, but I think that when you're just beginning, a purple strip can be very, very helpful in keeping it consistent. And as you get more experienced and you sew your seams, that you can start experimenting and seeing if you can get a consistent seam without it. Yeah. So, but I have, I have become so, um, used to using my quarter inch foot and I really do love my quarter inch foot. I think that is a staple that every beginner sewer should have with their machine is a quarter inch foot. Absolutely. And so in that way you're able to just like go along, you use that as the guide instead of... Right, right. Which that makes sense too because I guess I am using that as a guide as well. Mm -hmm. Just didn't even think about it because right. it is lining up with it. And I want to mention you're doing a great job. You're sewing up to your pins, but not going over, which is very, very important. And you have a good speed. And when you get a minute and you can stop, we can see that needle landing in the down position. Oh, yeah. So that it anchors. Thanks. So see how it lands down? Perfect. It's just right in there. Which that's great, because I do definitely find myself, especially Often when I am taking out a pin, sometimes I want to pause and take it out, which right. I guess from one beginner to another beginner out there, mm -hmm. um, don't be afraid to, if you have to pause, pause, especially if you can have the needle in down oh, position. Absolutely, absolutely. Something else I want to mention as I'm watching you, I think you're doing a great job. Um, make sure that whenever you're feeding the fabric through the machine, your hands are simply kind of very gently holding it in place. You don't want to pull the fabric or mm -hmm. push the fabric. You don't want it to, if you push it or pull it, it could stretch the fabric and you certainly don't want to do that. Mm -mm. So just let the feed dogs very nicely feed it through the machine and you'll get a perfect scene. You're doing a great job. Thank you. I'm concentrating really hard. Now this might be, I've discovered also for myself, I tend mm -hmm. to, at the very end, I move my hands. I guide this way the whole time and then I transition this way. Is that, that okay? It is okay, but that may also be the reason why you're going off the edge just oh, a really? little bit. Uh -huh. <gasps> so okay. just very carefully keep okay, it. let's try now, this way then. See, I think you're perfect. Slow down just a little. Keep. Since you know that you're doing that, then you can just slow down and watch it and keep it going. And once again, because we left our selvages on those strips, if it is just a little bit off on the very, very end, that selvage is gonna catch it and you're gonna trim that anyway. Oh, perfect. Oh, perfect. Yay, good job. I do think it's better actually. Like it's still, it's still at the very tail end. Right, but 
Uh, but see, you it, probably can't see it in there because it's white thread on white fabric. All right, and it kept it's all right on the selvage too, so you know that mm -hmm. that's going to fall off. So that's perfect. Oh, that's just going to go away, but it did it stay consistent until like just the last <laughs> tiny quarter inch, about. Yep, it looks so great. So that's improvement, actually. <laughs> it is. So try to keep yourself from repositioning. From repositioning. Your okay. Oh, okay. I didn't even know. I thought that was helping me, but this was really wonderful. It looks like you got it. Now yeah. I'm going to step away, take a quick break, and mm -hmm. you keep sewing. Yeah. All right, awesome. Okay. So there's my two strip assembly A's. See, I sewed the, the fabric two on either side of the fabric three. So now I'm gonna move on to my strip assembly B's. And the great thing about them is they're even simpler. It's just two fabrics together, it's not three. So in this case, you have a bigger number two fabric and a smaller sash of the number three fabric. So you make two and a partial of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that going and then we'll go talk with Fran about how to press and cut our units. Okay, Fran, I did it. I have all my strip assemblies done. It looks wonderful. Thank you. Is it time to press? I believe so. Okay, so we kind of talked about off camera a little mm -hmm. bit about pressing seams open or to the dark side. Yeah, and so Donna showed me to the dark side in the first series, which is a very common way for quilters mm -hmm. to press their seams. But Fran, you prefer to do it them open. I do prefer to do them open, and I just, Okay, I'm a self-taught quilter, which I think a lot of us are. And as I started quilting, I just mm -hmm. kind of decided that I preferred it so that I didn't have to go back and repress mm -hmm. and I'd be in the middle of a seam putting a block together. Mm -hmm. And they were already, if they're open, I never have that question. They always will end up matching. Right, so okay. I, I love it. I'm very comfortable doing it now. Mm -hmm. And I think that it still produces a great end result. So. Let's play with it and yeah. then we'll let you decide what you prefer. Okay. Now, whenever I start pressing, one of the things I do, as you can see on this one, there's a small strip and a large strip. This is our strip assembly B. Mm -hmm. So what I normally do is I put the smaller strip up like this because I'm going to run my hand under this. And okay. when it's the smaller side, it makes it a little bit easier. It's just not as much bulk of oh. the fabric. So you don't. Okay, All right. Gotcha. So then I'm going to begin by just opening at the end and using my thumb to open that seam. And then I take the point of my iron. Now I'm working with the point of my iron and then I'm gonna reach around and I'm gonna put my underneath fingers on the seam mm -hmm. and just give it a very small amount of pressure. I don't mm -hmm. wanna stretch it, just a little bit of pressure and then I'm gonna work with it, and the point of my iron will go right down those seams. Whoa! Just like that. Okay. Now I go and press the entire thing just to get it open, mm -hmm. then I come back and use the Mary Ellen's Best Press, mm -hmm. then I flip it over and give it one last press on the right side. Oh, okay. So do you wanna give that a shot? Yeah! Okay. Okay, so. Holds kind of over here. Right, and I do kind of keep my hand away from the iron mm -hmm. so that the steam is not getting me. <laughs> That's smart. <laughs> so just okay. a little bit of pressure. Oh, oh whoops. Oh, that happens okay. sometimes. And this is something that as you do it, it's just going to become second nature to you. And it's not going to be, you'll just get used to doing it. It's like cutting through butter. It's so <laughs> as, as soon as you like get that perfect tension. Right, the, just a little bit. Now we don't want to be stretching it, but just a little tension on that thread. And another thing, we are using a, a cotton wrapped poly thread, which is a very strong thread and it shouldn't really be um, weakened by pressing the seams open. Um, it really shouldn't stretch that much. It should be a very stable thread. And of course we put our stitch 
um, default stitch on two and a half, so that's also a good length for that. Great. Yeah. Oh, whoop. we're getting a steam bath up in here. <laughs> good for the complexion. <laughs> okay, so then, yeah. Then I put a little Mary Ellen's on it. Very nice. It's very, very nice. Okay, now once you've, you've uh, sprayed the Mary Ellen's Best Press on the seam, I flip it over and just give the actual seam another quick press. Okay. Just something I do. I don't know that it's necessary. Just a habit for myself. <laughs> <laughs> that is, you know, a lot of quilters, I think, have their, their little quirks or their little things that they like the most. Right. What are some of your quirks? Let oh, us know a, in the comments. That's a great idea. Um, let us know because I, we all kind of have our own little processes that we get in the habit of doing and we tend to do them and we don't even think about it. Mm -hmm. So I know whenever um, you and my mom asked me to do this series to show kind of my way of quilting, it really made me think, okay, what mm -hmm. do I do? Yeah. How do I do that? Yeah. So it's kind of cool. Well, that looks great. So okay. this is our Strip Assembly B. Yes. And let's put it over here on the table and then let's look at our pattern again. So one of the things I just want to point out, as you can see, here is our diagram for Strip Assembly B. Mm -hmm. And you can see your actual, oops, our actual assembly looks just like the picture. Yeah. So perfect. And then we've already done our Strip Assembly A. Mm -hmm. Let's just put that up here too so that everybody else can see, and you did a great job on this. Thank you. I love this fabric. I, I keep getting I distracted. <laughs> it's just so fabulous. So as you can see, the strip assembly A also looks just like the picture. We have our number three fabric in the center mm -hmm. with our two number twos on the edge. Mm -hmm. So it looks like we're ready to start yeah. cutting. Now, one thing I will say, I forgot to say when we were over here, mm -hmm. um, I did notice I I already, one perk, one pro for pressing your seams open already, they lay so flat. They do. It's and fabulous. And that's so nice. And I, I have a feeling that that's also going to help your quilt top in the long run be extra flat, which is, I think, what you're wanting. Extra flat. Yes, I prefer them extra flat. Mm -hmm. Now, you're still, when we get to piecing your blocks together mm -hmm. together when we pin we still need to make sure that we pin those seam lines and different mm -hmm. things like that and we'll get into that but yes it's so nice and smooth <laughs> <laughs> this is very so um there's a lot of satisfaction in looking at it. it's like ah oh, yes nice clean lines very crisp yeah <laughs> Okay, just okay. to say that. Yep, love it. It's a good observation. Very nice. Okay, so in our pattern it is mm -hmm. telling us that for our block, we're gonna need one unit A mm -hmm. cut from strip assembly A, and we need two unit Bs mm -hmm. cut from strip assembly B. Okay. So let's go ahead and start that. Do we wanna cut our A's first? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Go in alphabetical order. <laughs> Keep from getting confused. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're gonna cut into 17 four inch by eight inch for unit A. So unit A is four by eight. Right, so if you look here, you have arrows showing you which direction is the eight and which direction mm -hmm. is the four. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ah, yes, okay, so basically, from sewing these three together, you have made it yes. eight inches. Correct, perfect. Okay. okay, so let's get our ruler. Okay. And our rotary cutter, and let's start working okay. on that. You know what? I'm going back to... I'm, I'm trying to follow along per mm -hmm. quilter what their preference is and learning my way along the way. And you you cut on this end, right? Um, I, I know this is going to sound really funny, but when I square the fabric off the bolt, I do. But mm -hmm. whenever I do units, I don't. Oh, interesting. <laughs> so you do it that I'm going to throw a big loop in your <laughs> Do you Do you think, have any idea why you do it that way? Or is it just instinct, something that um, happens? The reason why I do it that, well, because, <laughs> okay, I feel like I've been caught. <laughs> I don't know. Um, well, the reason why I trim the fabric that way is because I want the ruler on the bulk of my fabric, mm -hmm. right? But in this case, because I have enough of the ruler on the fabric mm -hmm. and it won't slip, 
it's okay. Okay. Now what I tend to do, since I'm cutting a four inch unit, mm -hmm. let me just look at your ruler here. What I'm going to do is find my four inch, okay, I'm going to turn it around. The reason why is because I have one here, two here, three here, four here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take the four inch line and line it up on the inside of that selvage. Okay. I don't cut my selvage off first. Okay. I'm going to cut the four inch first. So my, one of my little tricks is I find a dotted line, I line it up with the seam line, and it looks nice and straight up here as well. Just kind of adjust it if we need to a little bit. I make sure that I have four, the four inch here, because that's the size unit we're cutting. Uh -huh. And then I cut my unit. Once I cut this, I then turn it around. So let's do this part and then I'll show mm -hmm. you what I do next. Okay. Okay. So it's all lined up. So I'm just gonna. Yep. I like that you put your body weight on it. Good technique. Thank you. It's, it's the most, it's the easiest way for me to do it. I feel like I have enough pressure to keep it down. Right. So you see how the ruler is on top of a nice big piece of fabric. So uh -huh. that's the pressure that I'm referring to. So the, the ruler covers the fabric up. Now I'm going to okay. take the ruler okay. off. Mm -hmm. So we'll take the ruler off. Let's turn your piece. Now let's trim the selvage off. Okay. And the ruler like still is on the bulk of the fabric. You don't okay. want the ruler only holding this little section. Because mm -hmm. it's easy for the fabric to kind of right. move around. And then once again, double check your measurements. You want it on the four inch. Four line. So would you recommend when you're lining this up to line it up by your seams or by the end of the fabric? I do both. So okay. the first step I do is line up the line here. Mm -hmm. And then as I mentioned, I like to find a dotted line uh -huh. because the dotted line you can kind of see through a little bit. Yeah, you can see it on there. And so I kind of line it up with that and then mm -hmm. I make sure that this is still lined up and then I trim. Okay. Perfect. So once again, the ruler's on the bulk of the fabric when mm -hmm. you trim. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. See, so. you have a method to your madness. You just have never had to explain it before. <laughs> That's so right. You have to think that about is it. right. Okay, so we have one unit A cut. Uh -huh. Perfect. Why don't we go ahead and cut a couple of unit Bs mm -hmm. from the strip assembly B? Perfect. Okay. We've got that right over here. So it's laying yep. out just mm -hmm. like it is on the pattern. Yep. The and our size is two and a half by eight. Yep, two and a half by eight. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our ruler lined up. This is a nice and small one. <laughs> now, would you put it right on the selvage or you give yourself a little bit I of room? I give myself just an ooch just, of a space. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you do the full body mm -hmm. cut. So just for everybody out there, I think this is another one of those situations mm -hmm. where everybody needs to kind of just try their own technique. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to share with one with you one of the things that I do whenever oh, yeah. I cut that's a little bit different. Yeah. Um, so we've got our ruler lined up perfectly. We're ready mm -hmm. to cut our unit B. Mm -hmm. um, and always remember to put your safety on with your rotary cutter when mm -hmm. you lay it down. So we're lined up. Um, what I do is this little pinky over mm -hmm. here, I put it on the edge of the ruler. And the reason why I do that is, to me, it keeps this ruler from shifting that way when I cut. Okay. And it also makes sure that my fingers are out of the way. <laughs> That's important too. Watch your fingers, friends. <laughs> yes. So I'll cut like that and then I do the little spider crawl, mm -hmm. put my finger back on the edge of the ruler, and then continue to cut. Okay. Okay. Well. Now I cut that one for you. Yeah. Well, that's fine. <laughs> All the little help I can get, right? <laughs> and then, um, once again, we'll do the same method as before. We'll turn this piece, trim the selvage, getting it the right size, and then we'll do our next unit B because we need two of these. Okay. I will try your method and maybe I will love it. But I also think that it really is 
very much a, um, you need to try a few things and see what you like, mm -hmm. and then use the one that you prefer. Which is, I think I've said this before, so I'm harping on this, but that's what I think is one of the best things about quilting and mm -hmm. art, is because you get to kind of do it your way. You do, and I think, you know, this is our hobby. We're not doing this for, I don't tend to do this for competition. It's a little too much pressure for me. Yeah, no, I love you. doing this just because I love quilting and putting the fabrics together and all the colors. Oh, perfect. Oh, I did it. But that was too nerve wracking. I think I'm going back to this. <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> that was, was kind of stressful. Okay. But that's, that's very funny. It's just everyone does have that because Donna's great at the snaking it up and yeah. I just I don't know it's not in my uh, DNA to do it that yeah way. Exactly. so I love yeah. it I love it so that's and that's it <laughs> choose the one that you like okay so those look great so we got so we one, one more. more you're doing a great job lining up and getting your seams and um, it really is practice I know that it does feel a little nerve-wracking but the more you do this and the more you go um, the easier it's going to be, and before you know it, you're just going to be whipping these hey. out. <laughs> it definitely was easier this time, cutting all my pieces and um, sewing my strip assemblies right. together. That was a lot right. faster. Well, your units look great. Hey, thank you. So we have unit A. Mm -hmm. So let's look at the pattern. Okay. So our block assembly is here with our unit A in the middle. Mm -hmm. And then we have a unit B on each side. And... And so for this one, all we have to do is whoop. Yep. <gasps> oh! Oh, I love it. I love it. Ah. Oh, that's exciting. That looks it's going nice. to be so pretty. Oh. <laughs> this looks great, Hannah. So let's go ahead and put them together, get them pinned together so we can sew okay. them. All right. So we'll start with one unit B and one unit A, pretty mm -hmm. sides together, and match up those seams. Okay. Now, it is going to be just a little bit different because you didn't um, press your seams to the dark. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to start your pin at the seam line. That way we're sure it's going to match. Okay. And, and do, you, do you put it just right on? Right on top. So I'm actually going to grab the pin cushion here. Oh, okay. Thank and you. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's get a... You're so welcome. So we're using our flathead pins, which I uh -huh. prefer. And I'm just going to kind of show you real quick what yeah. I do. Now, in this particular block, this is the only seam lines we're going to be matching. So mm -hmm. you see down here, there's not a seam line to match this one. Right. But so we're only mainly worried about that. So that's where we're going to start. And what I do is I take the pin and put it approximately a quarter inch from the edge, okay. which that would be where your seam allowance falls when you sew this. Yes. Okay. okay. So I'm going to put it through right at that, and then I'm going to turn it over and look at the back side and make sure that the pin comes through on the back side right mm -hmm. at the seam allowance. Okay. And then I'm going to take it down and poke it back through the other side, but I'm going to make sure I'm going through the seam allowance on the unit and then back through the seam allowance on the front. Okay. Okay. So you got to be pretty exact with your pin. In. So as you can see, it's through the seam allowance here mm -hmm. and here. Okay. Okay. And that's usually the first pin that I put in mm -hmm. any of the matching seams. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes you do have a little bit of um, extra and it doesn't quite work, and that's mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we want to get it as close as possible, but at this point, what I would do is put a seam down here as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that way whenever this feeds through, now you don't wanna pull this or stretch this when you're sewing, mm -hmm. but sometimes just the act of putting a pin down there, it can actually kind of just pulls it together it. and it works. <laughs> it works for you. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't quite understand it, but uh -huh. once again, go very, very slow. Okay. So. I, I would not normally pin both sides at mm -hmm. once. I would pin this and then sew it and mm -hmm. then come back and pin the other. But I think it would be great practice mm -hmm. if you wanted to do the other side. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so. 
That would be, I would like to you to see me pin it. Okay. We so, can take that one off if you want to. No, I want to make sure. Okay, so if I open this up, yep. my green's down there and my green's up there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just double checking because I, I don't want to jinx anything, but I only had to seam rip once on my last quilt. <laughs> That's a record, I think. <laughs> uh, I was very, very pleased with myself. Okay, right. so should I put the pin? Put it starting? straight down okay, into the seam. Straight down. You don't necessarily want to put it at an angle, so straight down to match the underneath seam. And now you can turn it over. Perfect, just about. Yep. Now put it in, and it can be a big pin. It doesn't have okay. to be. Yeah. There, and then you can turn it over and look on the other ah. side and see. Ta-da! Voila! Okay. So whenever I'm matching my seams for my quilt blocks, that's mm -hmm. how I prefer to pin them. Okay, perfect. All right. And then, mm -hmm. of course, Just we will pop a pin on the end there. That was easier than I thought. Okay, pinning straight down because I wanted, my brain was telling me I needed to go in at an angle, mm -hmm. but I think that would have been really hard. <laughs> Just straight down. Straight down. And then and go then. through both. You got it. Okay. Very, very simple. Yeah, Very that's nice. user friendly. Yeah. All okay. right. Do you think you're ready to sew your block yeah, together? Yeah, let's do it. It's getting exciting. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So we have our block all pinned. So now it's time to sew, right? Yep. Perfect. Yeah. And just remember to kind of go slow. Make sure you mm -hmm. set your speed slow and don't sew over the pins. <laughs> okay, <laughs> deal. <laughs> However, I'd like for you to get really close to the pin and mm -hmm. then just stop mm -hmm. and take it out. So okay. I can okay. do that. All righty. Now, does it matter which way I sew first? Like, do I? does it matter which side I sew first? It does not matter which side. Okay. Well, we'll start with this one because it's handy dandy and on top. Yep, that works for me. Okay. Get it okay. all lined up and very nice. And then we're just using our seam guide to get that good uh -huh. quarter inch. And very nice, good speed. And like okay. I said, we're working Here. with our needle down. I would maybe take a stitch or two more and then stop, pull your pen you play dangerous games, friend. I do, but you don't <laughs> want that fabric, those two layers to shift. You want those seams to match, which is the whole point and purpose of the pen. Right. So I do get pretty close and then stop. Now, something else that I like to do is to use the seam ripper kind of like a stiletto to hold it if we need to, if mm -hmm. you're feeling a little nervous about mm -hmm. getting your fingers too close to the needle. Oh, okay. So you're doing a great job. And perfect. I, I kind of have to. Sometimes I feel confident enough to keep going and take the pins out, but others I just gotta gotta stop, take the pin, and then keep going. Yep. And you know, actually, that's exactly what I do. Is I stop as well. <gasps> that's looking really good. Oh, I that, love it's, it. It's perfect. <laughs> it's the corner actually looks pretty good. So there we yeah. go. So and so. Go ahead and sew up to that pin just like you mm -hmm. did. And I do, I stop a lot whenever I'm sewing my blocks together because I do want to get close to that pin, just not to run over it. <laughs> so, okay. Guess. Very Would you nice. suggest I, well, no, I guess I have to do it this way. Um, no, you don't have to, not necessarily. I always like my pins on top. Uh huh. So, like, you see how they're pinned. Let's just pull it. Oh, so you see uh -huh. how you've put it in on top. I usually sew this side and not this side because they're going underneath. I don't know why I do that. I don't know that if it's... That makes sense. I bet it's easier to pull pull it out. Maybe. <laughs> it's okay. just something I've always done. <laughs> I'm sure there's a purpose for that, but I'm not <laughs> sure what that is. But that's just what I do. <laughs> well, and I'm sure when, you, when you've been sewing for a while, yeah, at some point you did figure you... We're like, this didn't work, so I'm gonna figure out something else. And so you figured out something else, and then you just kept on doing it that way. Right. <laughs> I right. bet there's a lot of quilters okay. out there. Yeah, go ahead and take a few. So you're pretty close to that pin. Very nice. And then we can stop and pull. 
<laughs> it is a little bit nerve wracking, but you got it. Very nice. Very, very nice. And remember, you never want to force the fabric through the machine. Go ahead and let the machine feed it. So when you're working on these, just let it relax and naturally go through the machine. It will feed it. So I could use this here? Like that? Yes, okay. and that kind of holds the end in place for you. Very so that's nice. also helpful for keeping it straight. Yes, I've it used is. it to push seams down, but not to to help feed. Okay, that's a, so. that's great. Dual purpose. Okay. You can use your seam ripper for so much more than just seam ripping. Yeah. <laughs> Ta -da! Oh, it looks really, really yeah. good. Good job. Yeah, Congratulations. I'm excited. So nice. I can't wait to see the whole quilt put <gasps> together. Know. Oh, and speaking of putting the whole quilt together, so I imagine we're going to go press this next before yes. we move on. We will right. go and press those seams next. But next time we get together, uh, so I'm going to go press my seams, but next time we get together, we're going to put my quilt top together. So you'll have all the blocks done. Mm -hmm. We'll put it together. Mm -hmm. And if you out there want to work along with Hannah, we do have the quilt kit available for the Stepping Stones pattern. It is called Fresh as a Daisy. And what is that number? Do you know that order number? Um, that number is 8021698. Oh, awesome. So you jump on our website, fabriccafe.com and you can order that kit as well. Yeah, come and quilt along with us. Yep, don't forget, share the YouTube video and give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and don't forget the little bell so that you can get notification when our next video comes up for yeah. Hannah putting her quilt together. Yeah, till next time. Thank you so much. <laughs>